There are a lot of bugs in Trackmania that the community has really come to embrace and make a lot of maps that revolve around playing with those bugs. You've got things like bug slides and nose bugs and uber bugs, but there's a mapper that's recently discovered a lot of new bugs in Trackmania 2, and his name is Velp. Now to anyone who's played on LOL maps, you've probably come across some pretty wild Velp maps, as he's always trying to find different ways of breaking the game and creating very chaotic experiences. So let's take a look at some of his newest discoveries in this game. So I think most of us are familiar with how bug slides and grass slides work. If you land on the ground, particularly grass, at high speeds while turning your car 90 degrees, and then you hold gas and brake while turning hard, you're able to maintain super grip with high speed around sharp turns. But one of the biggest issues with grass slides is trying to get in and out of them. Now getting into them, typically the only way of doing that is to take a jump and then land around the 90 degree angle and start the drift from there. However, if you've tried landing a grass slide, you'll know that if you overshoot it even a little bit, then you'll end up sliding out. Another issue with grass slides is that it can be kind of hard to come out of them without losing too much speed. So part of the reason you have to jump and land into the 90 degree angle is because if you're just driving normally through the grass and you start turning to the side, you're just going to start sliding and losing all your speed before you can even engage a bug slide. And so something that Velp and Schmanuel here have been experimenting a lot with is uh, being able to maintain the grass slide while going straight. So in this case you need to do two grass slides in a row, except that if you come out of the first grass slide and straighten out, you're not going to be able to get back into it for the second one. So you need to land the grass slide and then slide out of the grass slide going backwards and then turn yourself back into the grass slide to be able to make the final jump. Sometimes there is some those weird effects backward, like the game miscalculate uh, all that backward shenanigan I think because it's just uh, negative speed for the game. It's like a no grip but in control. You can control when you don't when you lose your grip or when you gain it. So now let's take a look at another map that really utilizes this. But instead of jumping into the grass slide, this one starts out a little bit differently. So like I said, if you're just driving flat on grass and you try turning, you're never going to be able to line up a grass slide because you're just going to drift and lose all your speed. However, when you start the map with a booster into an engine cutoff and a no grip, then as you are sliding across the grass, you can just rotate your car around so that you are at a 90 degree angle once the effects wear off when you go through the checkpoint. This means that you're able to keep driving backwards through the checkpoint without losing the speed and then line it up to turn that into a grass slide. So one of the weirdest things about the inputs you have to do to make this work is that when you're driving slightly backwards, like you've got to turn left a little bit to even out to be driving sideways, but then you have to immediately switch the direction to turning right with the bug slide because if you go too far left then you'll start losing all your speed. And so you'll see a lot of runs where I'm driving backwards and so I'll try lining it up but then I'll miss it and so I'll try again and then I'll just fly off and hit the wall. But then after you've done a couple of rings it's actually just faster to keep yourself rotated and slide sideways all the way back to the finish line. You need to be flat, very flat uh, in uh, almost 90 degrees. The flattest you are, the, more, the less grip you have. And now let's mix that mechanic with another weird one here, where I'll just let it play and I'll try and explain afterwards. So the way that this works is that I guess when you run into that wall with your two front wheels at this specific angle and speed, it acts almost like a mini uber bug and just pops you up into the air so you can do a 180. It's actually really crazy that this can work consistently, although it is really hard to pull off. The Schmanuel trick uh, allows you to keep every momentum that you can generate with that uh, second GS. So yeah, it's definitely faster. All right, enough with the grass slides. Here's something even stranger. So there are four different types of effect pads that you can drive over. You have the engine cutoff pad, where if you touch it, it means that you won't be able to accelerate anymore. There's the full speed ahead pad, which makes it so you can't touch the brakes at all, and it will just put the foot on the gas and you won't be able to slow down. Then there's the no grip, which makes you slide all over the place. And then a no steering one, where you're forced to just drive straight. But here we have a map that really experiments with the uh, full speed ahead pad. But what happens when you find yourself driving into that pad backwards? So this map starts off the same way that other map does, with the freewheeling and no grip, so you can twist yourself around and jump into this no brakes pad at high speed. And uh, I was very confused with the results of this. So if you touch the full speed ahead while driving backwards, you'd probably assume that it would just uh, stop driving backwards. It would come to a complete stop really quickly and then start driving forwards. But instead, what ends up happening is that you're driving
driving full speed backwards, you're not accelerating. I don't know what gear you're supposed to be in. You're still losing speed the entire time, but the brakes don't work and the accelerator don't work either. Literally all you can do is steer and your speed will just gradually go down. And then you mix that with driving backwards over reverse boosters. And this whole map is just full of weird bugs all just stacked on top of each other. The game you have applies uh, maybe the, f the forward physique in the backward uh, state. So yeah, it's uh, very wacky. The game doesn't understand what's going on. But then it gets even stranger because, like I said, you can't control your brakes or your acceleration. However, if you run into a wall or you just do something that causes you to lose all your speed, it'll just start driving forwards like it's supposed to, as if nothing ever happened. There's a few more bugs involved here, but let's move to another map that does the same kind of thing. So I've talked about tube launchers before, where if you drive into a very tight, squeezed spot and there are bumpers it's like it's trying to bump you but you've got nowhere to go because you're squished into a tight space so it'll just bump you over and over again really fast and then send you flying so this map has a very low input start where if you just hold reverse and right then it'll send you flying out backwards at about 700 speed and you've got to try and maintain stability because uh, if you get any bit of airtime it's really easy to start drifting and once you start drifting it's like your turning gets reversed but that's only if it's like a full drift also when you jump you trigger those nasty the uh, lock wheel effect that Nadio didn't find out while making the blocks, I guess. <laughs> so. If you'll notice, some of the times that I land that mostly straight, I'll have a tiny bit of tire tracks, and for whatever reason, it's like your steering just locks up. Like, it looks like I'm just like not even trying to steer when this happens, but this is as sharp as I can possibly turn when the wheels do this. All the while, you just continue to lose speed throughout the whole thing, because uh, the car is not meant to ever be accelerating past this point in reverse. You don't really have reverse gears that takes you that high, so all you can do is uh, coast on the speed you start with. All right, now it's time to talk about the slither trick. So again, we're gonna start with a no engine and a no grip pad. You have to rely entirely on the boosters to send you forward, and you have to do these weird maneuvers to avoid the holes. So as the tutorial suggests, to go around the corners, you're going over these backwards boosters, but you gotta turn the car slightly sideways Sideways and push on the brake because the backwards boosters are basically designed to accelerate you in the direction of your backside. I feel like just watching this explains it way better than I can put into words. It's all about just keeping your car tilted at just the right angle so that you can slither around the corners. Free will and and low grip effect. Uh, when you brake, you go instantly in the direction of the rear of your car. Mm -hmm. It's so weird, like you go backward instantly. No matter the speed you have. For example, here we are going forward, but if I tilt my car 90 degrees to the left, and my back is tilting to the right, I brake, I will go to the right <laughs> instead of just losing speed. But he didn't stop there. I can tell he's had a lot of fun putting this uh, no grip and engine cutoff combo together. So this one, you've just got to come up with a way to angle your car in a way that maximizes speed somehow. And pretty much the way that I've discovered the fastest way to drive through this is to have your car pointed in the exact direction that the arrows are, even though you're driving at a 90 degree angle. It definitely seems like the more your car is aligned with the direction of the arrow, the more speed that's getting pushed into the car even though you aren't even going in that direction. I don't know, it sounds super weird, and it's pretty weird to play as well. But now to top it all off, we've got one going backwards. So with so many of these maps, you're really just confused on what the inputs are that you're supposed to follow to get through this. Because initially, it looks like you're supposed to just hold reverse and turn to the left the entire time. Except that if you keep holding the brake, uh, it causes you to just swerve out or something. So it's actually better to not hold anything while you're going through all this. And you also can't rely on holding the turn the entire time. You've got to sort of just tap it all, all the way through. But just take a look at this final stretch into the finish line. Your car is pointed to the left, the boosters are pointed to the right, and yet you're going straight. I'd say this is truly how Trackmania is meant to be played. And if you're wondering why the effect continues even after you touch the checkpoint, because uh, usually the checkpoint removes the effects, um, each checkpoint just has the effects underneath it, so uh, it technically never really wears off as you're going through it. It's that, that weird mechanic that I can't really explain by going back when you have have a better uh, grip in the grip like it's so weird you can do some sharp turn but that's gonna do it for all of these crazy bugs that have been discovered recently. I think next time I want to just do a video on the craziest maps Velp has come up with. That was originally what this video was supposed to be about, but I felt like there was a lot of things to explain and how a lot of these maps work first. So look out for that. I'll see you next time.